Hello everybody and welcome back to the Fantasy Football Fix YouTube channel. I'm your host FPL Phillips and today it's another episode in my series of team selections where I'm pleased to say that we're on a pretty decent run for what feels like the first time this season. Two pretty big green arrows on the trot, meaning my rank is looking a little bit more respectable to the you guys watching at home. I am now back for home for the Christmas break from university, uh, so the technology side of things is not perhaps as good as it was. I'm trying to get it sorted as quickly as possible, but apologies for any mishaps uh, in this one if the quality and the camera and the speed and the frame rate, etc. isn't quite as good. I shouldn't be giving you guys excuses. I'll try to get it sorted as quickly as possible, but hopefully this will do for just one video today. My face is only a small part of it in the top corner for most of the video anyway, as you guys know. But yeah, I'm pleased to inform you that I've got my wildcard still. I'm looking to take some fun and exciting punts, which always seems to make for good content on YouTube and is also just a fun way of playing FPL. I've got some exciting punts to make. Maybe I can tempt you guys into those two. One free transfer for this game week after using both in my last one. But yeah, let's get into having a look at how my team is shaping up for game week 8. <laughs> So yeah, my current total is 72 points for game week 17, and that is with the before we've had the announcement, which I'm assuming we're getting today at some point, as to what's happening with that Bournemouth versus Luton results. Obviously, first and most important was that Lockie was okay, and people on Twitter were jumping a bit to ask to whether my Solanke bonus points are going to be coming in. I'm someone who owns Solanke. I think the most likely scenario is we'll probably either get his bonus points added, or, you know, they'll stay as the six. I'm really hoping, to be honest, that they don't wipe out the points for that entire game and put them to zero, because I have Matty Cash on the bench, who only scored two, whereas I think some other people might be in a bit more luck if they had someone who did actually score decently down as their first sub. So I would really like to keep the slaggy points, to be honest. I was very happy with him as my transfer in a couple weeks ago. I've held him for a decent while now. And so, yeah, nine points would be really nice to see and would make that green arrow even higher. My latest rank currently sits inside the top 400k. So I am really quite happy. 2.9 mil in the bank and one free transfer uh, to use this week. And I'm not looking to take any hits, really, given that I've only got two game weeks until the wild card. There's less time for one of those to pay off, really. And this is how my team looks as things stand. The goalkeeping department is one where there probably does need to be a little bit of a change. Steve Cooper has been sacked as Nottingham Forest manager. And I guess we don't know uh, who his replacement or the interim manager is going to choose as their number one keeper. So there's no real guarantee, it has been the case for a long time now, that Turner does start. I have Sam Johnston on the bench as my other keeper, who was my starting player. Uh, who is still injured, it seems. So, Turner against Bournemouth would be my ideal one to start this game week. Again, Bournemouth is still a very difficult fixture at the moment. They've been in some fine form themselves. So, really not happy with the goalkeeping choice, but... The thing with goalkeepers is there's not real any option that I'm looking for that I can guarantee myself, oh yeah, they're going to get two clean sheets over the next two game weeks. If I was looking to make a goalkeeper slot, which to be honest, because I'm pretty happy with the rest of my team, is relatively high up in my list this game week as a rarity, then I would probably do turn it to someone like an Emmy Martinez, maybe even Martin Dubravka could be one that I still go for. Newcastle do have two very nice fixtures coming up next, but they've not been in the best form recently, as evidenced by their performance on Tuesday night against Chelsea in the League Cup. In defence as well, I was looking at maybe bringing in Kieran Trippier, but his recent form in that game that I just mentioned last night as well, especially, has put me off that slightly. At the moment, I have the Cells, uh, Trent Alexander-Arnold, and then Matty Cash as my starting defenders, with Simicas as first sub down there on the bench. I also have uh, Taylor. In fact, we'll reveal the bench now, uh, just so you get a bit of a better picture of how my back five looks. So I have got Taylor, who I could actually start as well. Maybe might even move him to first sub. So there are some options there for me, if it doesn't look like Matty Cash is going to play. Uh, what I think happened is that an injury in midfield for Aston Villa means that Matty Cash is more or less likely less likely to start due to the fact that the coverage from him, uh, I think it was, uh, I can't even remember who, Kamara, uh, coming around the back of Matty Cash to cover for him. It tends to be the system that's deployed when Cash is in the team, whereas when Cons is at right back, he is a more defensive player. So with uh, Kamara suspended, it's not looking too good for Matty Cash. FPL Villain is the one on Twitter who I don't even pretend uh, to do all the research myself. Villain is the man to follow if you want any news on Villa. And that's why I'll be looking closer to the deadline as to any news we might get. Of course, the deadline is on Thursday, so bear that in mind. But also, um, the Aston Villa game is on Friday, so maybe a slight hint we could get with uh, some early team news or some leaks. Trey Zander Arnold, of course, very happy with. Brought him in last week. Grabbed me nine points. Very happy with him. Had him and Simicast in that game against Manchester United that ended up finishing 0-0. 
And my midfield is another area where I am really happy with. Uh, Cole Palmer, last week scoring 14 points was very nice for me. And overall, there's just no justification to making any changes. As much as I would like to bring in someone in midfield, and uh, maybe someone like a Richarlison I could go for, or Mohamed Kudus for two weeks. These guys look like pretty nice punts for it to me. Uh, I just can't justify taking out any of these five players over making a defensive swap where, you know, I've got Cash who might not start, Simakas and Taylor don't look ideal as well, or maybe even in goal. I can't think about making a midfield move when I have those problems to sort out in defence and only one free transfer. And then finally up front, another area where there's no issues, Ollie Watkins who's taken the captain's armband for me this game week, and then of course Dom Solanke who we talked about earlier on. So with Haaland looking like, well, he's blanking this week anyway, but is out. And Salah having a tough fixture against Arsenal. Who's the best captaincy option to go for this week? Could it still be Mohamed Salah? So we'll talk about that now. <laughs> Apologies if I sound a little off, by the way, today. Uh, there's a bit of an illness going around my household at the moment. Uh, nothing too serious. But yeah, uh, if it is my voice or I'm sounding even out of breath talking... That's because I'm feeling a little bit under the weather, but should be on the men soon, hopefully in time for Christmas. Uh, same for any of you guys who aren't feeling quite your best at the moment. Hopefully uh, we can get all better by the 25th. But yeah, more important things, captaincy and FPL this game week. Ollie Watkins does have to look like the standout pick. 6.8 predicted points, back that up as well from the algorithm. Son and Salah in behind him are only on 6.0, so quite a significant gap. 0.8 points uh, between the next runners behind Ollie Watkins for this game week. And of course, that, a lot of that factor will be the Sheffield United at home fixture. 2.28 expected goals conceded and make them by far the weakest defence of the bunch uh, that these teams are going up against. Everton's uh, good form as of late is also maybe another reason to sway away from Hyun Min Son. They've kept what, four clean sheets in their last four, looking pretty decent at the moment. I would still like Son as a captaincy option, but really, when Watkins is on offer... Probably not going to go there, but I am still looking at bringing in maybe Pedro Porro into my team as a defensive pick. Then in terms of XG, Liverpool are highest up as a team. And then in terms of the individuals, Mohamed Salah, as usual, is leading the way in terms of expected FPL points per 90 so far this season. So let's have a look at the top 10 predicted point scorers of this game week. They're not just looking at captains the options, but here are the overall top 10. Watkins, Salah and Son are up there at the top. We've then got Douglas Luiz and Emmy Martinez coming in, as well as Bernd Leno. So if I am looking for a keeper option, maybe these two could be ones to go for instead. I mentioned Dubravka. He's got two nice fixtures. Villa don't have as nice a game week 19 fixture. Fulham could also be a way to go. They have got a suspension now uh, with Raul Jimenez. I'm not sure how that's going to it's going to affect them going forward, but Fulham, as of late, they've, they've been a bit off, off and on uh, with their form, so maybe I could go for Leno. He can always pull out a really good points tally, even in tougher fixtures, which is something to bear in mind with him. We've then got Pau Torres, who looks like he should be ready and fit to go for the weekend. Kieran Trippier, who I kind of mentioned, and I do have the money to afford, is probably going to be him up against someone like a Porro for me this week if I do choose to go with an outfield defensive switch. We've then got Luca Dean, who, to be honest, I would avoid just due to the fact that we've got Alex Moreno now back in contention at Aston Villa. And if anything, I'd probably put more money uh, on Alex Moreno starting in game week 18 than Luca Dean. And then finally, Miguel Almiron at 6.2 million. 4.8 predicted points for him in this game week as Newcastle have their kind fixture against Luton Town. So yeah, that's my overall thoughts on my team for this week in terms of if I had to predict what I'm going to be doing now. It will only be the one change unless something goes terribly wrong and then I am willing to maybe take a minus four. What I could see myself definitely doing uh, is holding on to the two Liverpool defenders for their Burnley fixture in game week 19. Holding on to the sales, of course, for this game week. So it would probably either be, if I'm not going to start cash, I might as well just remove him. So I'd maybe do cash to Pedro Porro or to Kieran Trippier. Or alternatively, in goal, Johnston probably uh, upgrading him to someone like an Emmy Martinez. Or alternatively, downgrading him to a Dubravka and starting him for these next two weeks. So let me know, out of those kind of four options, what would you guys do? Who would you remove? Who would you bring in? And ask me your own questions down below in the comments. I'm always more than happy to try and help you guys out with any dilemmas of your own that you are having. Thank you very much for tuning into this one. Eddie versus the algorithm coming your way this week as usual. Let's see if I can beat the computer generated team. I hope to see you tuning into that one. Where hopefully I'll catch you there. Goodbye. <laughs>